Hello, my name is Arya Gupta and I am presenting the paper Tolerance to Asynchrony of an Algorithm for Gathering Myopic Robots on an Infinite Triangular Grid. In this paper, we will study synchronization. Specifically, we will discuss eliminating synchronization, some ways how to do that, and what the theory behind those ways looks like. A general multiprocessor system contains several computing nodes and every node contains guards and corresponding actions. Guarded action, uh, a guarded action looks as follows, G implies A sub C, where G is the guard, G is the Boolean expression over multiple variables, uh, and A sub C is the action, which is executed only when G evaluates to true, the corresponding guard. In most algorithms, we see the assumption that G is, G is evaluated in the current state. To ensure uh, that this assumption is uh, enforced in the system, we require synchronization. And in effect, we ensure that the data is read in a consistent fashion. Let's look at an example problem, minimal dominating set. In this problem, the input is a graph G and the output is a minimal set D of nodes such that for every node I, either I in D or one of its neighbors is in D. We consider the following graph, example graph of two nodes, uh, which are connected to each other by an edge. The possible states are in and out. An example algorithm for node one can be designed as follows. If node one reads that one is out and two is also out, uh, which means that the global state is in an infeasible state. So one will try to move to a feasible state by turning itself into the dominating set. If one sees that one is in and two is also in, which means that we are in a feasible state, but not an optimal state. So one tries to turn this into a, an optimal state by moving itself out of the dominating set. And a similar algorithm can be designed for node two. So let's see the functioning of this algorithm without synchronization. Let's assume that we are at global state four where both the nodes are out. And let's assume that one reads the state of itself and two, it sees that both the nodes are out then one decides to move in. Similarly, if two reads the state of both the nodes at the same time, then two will also decide to move in. So if both the nodes execute asynchronously, state four can transition to global state three. In global state three, both the nodes are in. Again, if these both nodes read the state of each other asynchronously, then both these nodes will uh, decide to move out of the dominating set and uh, we have that global state three will transition to global state four, and this can continue forever. So we see that if only one node is allowed to execute a time step, then we can guarantee convergence. But if both the nodes are allowed to execute asynchronously, simultaneously, then the global state may never converge. So what do we want to do? <clears throat> How should we design guards such that we can allow the nodes to execute asynchronously? If a node can decide that it in its current local state, the system cannot reach an optimal global state, then it can change its current local state asynchronously. In the system depicted in this figure, uh, there are n nodes. Let's look at the behavior of node 2. Node 2 is transitioning from 1 to 2 to 3 and so on. Let's see the transition from 3 to 4. When node 2 decides that 3 is not a good state for any optimal state, it discards uh, the local state 3 and moves to local state 4. Again at local state 4, when it decides that this local state is not a good local state for any optimal global state, 
it does not have to go back to local states 3, 2, or 1 because 1, 2, and 3 are already uh, declared to be bad local states uh, for node 2. So it transitions uh, from local state 4 to local state 5. So in this case, we see a total order among the local states visited by individual nodes. And this is because at every step, any node, uh, the nodes have only one choice of action. We come to the definition of impedanceable nodes. So we are designing predicates in such a way that the nodes can determine that a local state is not viable for any optimal global state. And that is why we can allow the nodes to uh, execute in asynchrony. Because of the local, I'm sorry, total order uh, that is being induced among the nodes, the global states form a lattice. A node which is in a bad local state is called impedanceable. This word is a conjunction of two English words, impediment and indispensable. And it is impedanceable because it is an impediment to progress if it does not execute. And that node is impedance, I'm sorry, indispensable to execute for progress. We saw that a total order can be induced if there are only one choice of action, but if there are multiple choices of action, then a partial order will be induced. So if, if a node discards in this example, local state one, then it, it has choices, three choices. It can move to choice, I'm sorry, local state. It can move to local state two, local state three, or local state five. Let's say that it, transitions to local state 3, then if it discards local state 3, in effect, it is also discarding 2 and 5. So it is discarding, in this case, multiple local states at a single step. And from 3, there is only one choice, uh, which is to move to state 6. So here, the condition of impedanceability applies the same. The only difference is that we may have multiple choices of action here. This condition is necessary and sufficient to allow asynchrony. This idea is under submission as of now. By our theory, we have that if we want to prove tolerance to asynchrony of an algorithm, then we don't have to generate the entire uh, global state transition system, uh, which is exponential in, you know, in time. Uh, we only have to check for uh, partial, uh, I'm sorry, we only have to check if there exists a partial order among the local states uh, visited by individual nodes, a partial order or a total order. However, induction of partial order is out of scope for this presentation. We'll only focus on the induction of total order. Lattice linear problems uh, are the first model uh, which uh, which more are the first uh, published model which uh, model the system in such a way that we can allow the system to execute in asynchrony introduced by garg in spa 2020 and we are going to study an example problem from the, uh, from this paper which is called stable marriage problem this problem, there are men and women. Men have preference lists and women rank men. Men will propose to women and women accept or reject that proposal based on these lists. In this example, we have three men and three women and we have a process for each man. And so there are three local states in every global state. So we start from the initial global state, which is one, one, one. And we have that here, all the men are proposing to their first choices. So A is proposing to Z, J is proposing to Z, and T is proposing to K. So we see that there is a conflict between A and J. But according to Z, A is more preferable 
So J is impedanceable and J moves to the next choice. So in the global state, J moves from local state one to local state two. J is now proposing to K, but now J has a conflict with T. According to K, J is more preferable. And so T is impedanceable. T moves to the next choice. And T uh, start proposing to K. So T moves from local state one to local state two. In this global state one to two, we have that A is proposing to Z, J is proposing to K, and T is proposing to M. We see that there is no conflict. This global state is an optimal global state, and we have reached this state. So we see here that the local states are forming total order. Uh, they only move from choice one to choice two to three and so on, and there is no point coming back. And as a result of this total order, we see this nice lattice structure that is induced among the global states. We also see that we only uh, we go, we can only start from a um, a specific initial state. Uh, otherwise, we might not be able to reach the optimal state. Uh, here, all the edges in this figure are pointing upwards. We also see that in any specific uh, suboptimal state, we can point out specific nodes that must change their state. For example, in this state, we have that uh, the ma the third man, man T, is uh, impedanceable. And this property makes this problem let us linear problem. In this paper, we examine an algorithm to gather the robots, uh, myopic robots on an infinite triangular grid. And this algorithm was originally developed by Goswami and others in SSS 2022. Problem conditions are as follows. The underlying grid is an infinite triangular grid. The robots can only be on vertices of that grid and they can only uh, move across the edges of that grid. All the robots are myopic. They cannot see beyond distance one. The robots are memoryless. They cannot have a storage capacity. The robots form a connected graph in an initial state. This is required from the problem. If the robots don't form a connected graph, then Goswami proved that um, we cannot uh, guarantee convergence. And in effect, the algorithm ensures, the algorithm that we are going to study, it ensures that the robots keep forming a connected graph throughout the execution. The robots agree on an axis. If there is no axis agreement, again, Goswami and others prove that we cannot guarantee convergence. Uh, in our case, we'll call the axis of agreement y-axis. The task is to gather the robots on a single point. We see a trivial example here. The input is the graph, uh, infinite triangular grid, and there are two robots present across a single edge. We will call them top robot and bottom robot. It is possible that in the left figure, uh, the top robots, the top robot moves down towards the bottom robot, and we have a state of convergence. Otherwise, the bottom robot can move towards the top robot, and we have another, a different state of convergence. So we see that we cannot determine uh, by the natural constraints of the problem which node is impedanceable. And with this, uh, because of this reason, uh, this problem is a non lattice linear problem. So we'll algorithmically we decide that all robots will move down. Uh, and this algorithm originally, again, it is by Goswami and others. This is an example global state. Uh, in the future slides, we are going to study what these boundary line mean. Uh, and we are going to study uh, the algorithm. The general idea is as follows. The robots that have robots above them do not move. 
So for example, this robot is not going to move. This robot can move. Uh, this robot can move. But this robot cannot move. This robot can move because there is no robot above it uh, within distance one. Okay. This figure describes the nomenclature of positions around the subject robot, robot I. The below robot I, we have V1. Above V1, we have V2 left and V2 right. Above V2 right, we have V3 right. Above V2 left, we have V3 left. And above the robot I, we have V4, location V4. So the uh, we are going to discuss the cases. In case one, uh, we have that a robot is present at location V1. So the subject robot is supposed to move down in this case. In case two, the robots are present only at location V1 and V2 left. Again, the subject robot is supposed to move down to V1. In case three, we have robots present at V2 left and V2 right. In this case as well, the robot is supposed to move down to location V1. In case four, we have that the robots are present at V1, uh, V2 left and V2 right. Uh, in this case as well, the robot is supposed to move down to location V1. In case five, a robot is present at the location V2 left. And in this case, the subject robot is supposed to move to the location V2 left. These states form a, com a complete algorithm, converging algorithm. And uh, the, the cases, possible cases are all these cases that are here, all these five cases and the cases that are mirror images of these cases. For example, case two has a mirror image, which is not uh, same as case two. Case five is a mirror image, which is not same as case five. We can also see by the movements of these robots that we are trying, we are ensuring by the algorithm that the connectivity of the robots does not break. In the original algorithm by Goswami, we have that the polygon which is formed by lines A, B, B, P, P, C, and C, D, and A, D. This polygon A, B, P, C, D is uh, the, the polygon that restricts the movement of the robots. It means that under this algorithm, the robots will stay within uh, this polygon. However, we find that a shorter polygon is able to restrict the motions of the robot. For example, uh, in this case, the, ro the, the, the polygon which is formed by lines A, B prime, B prime Q, Q, C prime, C prime D, and A, D. So we find that A, B prime, Q, C prime, D is able to restrict the motions of the robot robots because and this is because the robots are not going to move up, so they are not going to cross A, D. The robots that are at A, B prime fall under cases, the mirror image of case two and the mirror image of case five and case one. So we see that in this case, they are not going to go leftwards uh, of A, B prime. And similarly, the robots that are at B, J, I'm sorry, D, C prime, they fall under case one, case two, or case five. So they don't move rightwards uh, of D, C prime. The robots that are slanting, uh, that are on the slant, slants uh, B prime Q and Q C prime, they fall under uh, the cases, uh, case, uh, I'm sorry, the mirror image five, the mirror image of case five and case five respectively. So they are also not going to cross B prime Q and Q C prime. Because of this uh, restricted uh, movement, we are also able to predict the convergence point. In this case, we have that uh, point Q is the point of convergence of the robots. So given any initial state or intermediate state, we can predict the point of convergence correctly. 
then it does not change under the algorithm. Our contributions are as follows. Initially, the authors assumed a distributed scheduler, but we find that no synchronization is required for this algorithm to converge. The original algorithm contained seven cases, and in the paper, we have a detailed discussion about all the seven cases. However, in this presentation, we only discuss five cases. These, uh, these cases uh, we have described in a technical report of this paper as well. We have reduced the boundary, the restricting boundary to A, B, P, C, D, to A, B prime, Q, C prime, D. Both the original and modified algorithms uh, are lattice linear and they are tolerant to asynchrony. They are lattice linear because we have that all the robots, they have only one choice of action. And for the same reason, all moves are predictable. And because of this predictability, we are also able, uh, as we saw, we are also able to, uh, uh, to compute the point of convergence correctly. In the original paper, the authors, uh, they opine that the robots will converge within 2.5 and rounds. However, we find that uh, this L, the same algorithm can converge uh, in two and rounds. More work in lattice linearity. We have introduced eventually lattice linear algorithms where the lattices are formed only among a subset of the state space, a subset of global states, uh, but the algorithms, the I'm sorry, the acting algorithms, they guarantee that from an arbitrary state, we move to a lattice, and from the lattice, the system moves to an optimal state. We introduce fully lattice linear algorithms where all the states form a lattice. We move to conclusion. Lattice, linear, lattice linearity implies that said algorithm can run without synchronization. We can prove that an algorithm is tolerant to asynchrony just by analyzing the behavior of the local states, I'm sorry, the behavior node, behavior, behavior of transition of uh, individual nodes uh, as the transition among the local states as opposed to analyzing the entire global state space and checking for the absence of cycles. Anytime that a distributed system or parallel processing algorithm is designed, uh, we strongly recommend that we should test if it exhibits properties of partial order induction or lattice linearity, in which cases, uh, the algorithm might be uh, the algorithm will be tolerant to asynchrony and will not require any synchronization assumptions. We have some open problems. What other problems can we apply lattice linearity in? What existing algorithms exhibit lattice linearity? This terminates my presentation. Thank you.